Hi, it's Ayawimala. Today's Thursday and the week has flown by. I'm sitting in my backyard. So it's, uh, it's also the backyard for uh, many, many people. Not just me. It's for everybody, for about 30 other people. And we share it and we border on the backyards of uh, neighbors with lovely gardens and lots of flowers. So it's such a beautiful day. I thought I really wanted to uh, be outside and couldn't make it to Mainstay, but this is, this is just gorgeous out here. So I hope you're having a beautiful day. And if you're living in the middle of a hurricane or storms, storms or flooding or fires, uh, we're, sending, we're sending you all of our good thoughts and wishing you could have some of the ideal weather that we're experiencing right now, if only we could share it. So all we can share is our energy and our good thoughts right now. So today, I have a new book. My friend Allison, who's, who's I'm, I'm always receiving the most amazing books from her. This is a book called Real Change. Can you see it? It's backwards, so. It's a new book, Real Change, Mindfulness to Heal Ourselves and the World. And it's by Sharon Salzberg, who's one of the founders of the Insight, Insight Meditation, uh, who studied in Asia and then came back here and along with Joseph Goldstein, Goldstein uh, and Jack Cornfield. The, and Sharon, they began Insight Meditation Society. And Bari a Retreat Center is part of that group. She's one of my favorite teachers. And uh, I love how calm she is and down to earth. And she's had a pretty amazing life. So this is a new book for me. So I haven't read all of the book. I've just started it. But I was looking, there are often very interesting things at the back of the book, of any book, but especially I find in Buddhist books, there are great either appendices or glossaries or often uh, meditations at the back of the book and little additional things like specific, specific ways to work with, the, with the, what the book is about. So this one, the one I want to share with you today for a meditation is called, the, it's practice, awareness of the embodied self. That's, that's this. Loving kindness for, for the you the world sees. So I think that's really interesting because she's talking about Well, this will explain itself. I don't have to read anything else. So why don't we do this? It's very short. But we'll do it as a meditation. So you can close your eyes and relax. Take a few minutes to bring your attention to your body in this present moment. Gently focus on your experience of this very moment. Get granular. Notice the subtle sensations of breathing in and out, including the points of contact between your body and the ground beneath you.
rest in the strength of these grounding sensations. Wherever you can feel the contact between your body and the ground beneath you, that could be the seat of your chair or the cushion you're sitting on or bench you're kneeling on or if you're in a chair or lying in a bed, you're feeling the connection that that piece of furniture makes with the floor, the earth. No matter how high up in a building you are, that's your connection with the earth. Notice, I'll repeat that, notice the subtle sensations of breathing in and out, including the points of contact between your body and the ground beneath you. Rest in the strength of these grounding sensations. Now call to mind one out aspect of your outward identity that other people notice by sight or sound alone when they encounter you. This might be your gender, your age, or what you may think of as your ethnicity. Aspects of language and culture that are part of how you identify yourself in the world. Home in on this aspect of who you appear to be. Consider how this affects how you are received, what opportunities may be available to you, whether you are given the benefit of the doubt. Home in on this aspect of who you appear to be. Consider how this affects how you are received what opportunities may be available to you, whether you are given the benefit of the doubt. Pause and notice what thoughts, emotions, or sensations are arising for you and in you right now. What were you taught to believe about bodies like yours? About differently racialized bodies? How might this aspect of your social identity have shaped, shaped your experience in the world? Have you spent more time in places where you were in a significant minority or majority based on your race or gender. Are there ways that this identity has been a source of comfort to you, a source of advantage to you? Are there ways that this identity has been a source of discomfort to you? <clears throat> a source of disadvantage to you? <clears throat> Now 
Now practice letting your thoughts that include your judgments and your stories, letting them go. Imagine each as a cloud sitting in the sky and floating across that blue sky and just return to the sensation of the body and the breath. Let's just sit for about five minutes. Whatever images have arisen in your mind, be aware of them. Then just let each of those images just be a cloud floating across the sky. Whether they were positive images or negative images, let them arise, be aware of them, but now let them go. Now sit with your breath. Be aware of your body breathing. Just keep relaxing. If you're breathing in clear, clean air, be filled with gratitude for that. Don't take it for granted. And send your good thoughts to people breathing in air that is maybe unhealthy, maybe full of smoke, Maybe it's always been unhealthy where that person lives. Or maybe it's part of conditions of the recent fires. Send out wishes for everyone to be able to breathe clean, healthy oxygen. Allow your body to breathe in, relax your body so you can feel that oxygen going down into the bottom of your lungs. Let it be healing.
Now send goodwill. Out to all of those suffering from illness, from the side effects of the fires raging in the west coast <clears throat> of our country, to all of the humans and all of the, the animals and all of the life that's been destroyed, that's still in danger of being destroyed. Send out goodwill and metta to everyone being affected by the hurricane coming. It's come in through the Gulf. Sally is still having profound effects on the opposite side of our country. Lots of flooding. Send out goodwill and metta to all the beings, all the living beings, the human beings, but also the animals affected, the vegetation, the growth, all of the life that's affected and changed by these weather events all the time, all around the world. Send out goodwill to all the people in this country trying to do the best thing for themselves and their families, making their way through the pandemic and through the changes in our society. The upheaval that we're all experiencing and feeling. in every small moment, every beautiful breeze, every sunset, sunrise, there are always moments of happiness, there are always moments of joy, there are many of those, we need to be awake for them. Be content and easily satisfied. That's part of the Metta Sutta. If we live frugally and we're content and easily satisfied, we have a better chance for happiness, for true happiness. It's so important to find joy and happiness in small, small things, but things that, that make a difference, things that matter.
wanted to show you a little bit more of the scenery, less of me, of my backyard. hear the wind chimes, I'm sure. I want to encourage all of you to spend even a little bit of time out in nature. I always uh, am telling myself the same thing, but it makes a huge difference. We don't have to be doing anything, just to be outdoors sometimes gives us a different sense of our place in the universe and a different sense of that openness and spaciousness. So I, I want to finish today to uh, make a suggestion that, based on what I heard about the, on the news, the BBC International News this morning, were Tresemme products. I know, I just know of the shampoo and conditioner. It's a very popular brand here. But they are, they're advertising in South Africa has been really criticized, and they're a big, huge brand there. Their advertising uh, was implying that uh, beautiful hair is blonde, uh, blonde hair, and hair that needs a lot of work and needs to be tamed and conditioned is black hair. And uh, I've used Tresemme, and I thought, I don't think I'm going to use that anymore. I think that's it's kind of unbelievable that in South Africa, that a big uh, a, a big market that they have, they're actually being having racist attitudes towards the people they're trying to sell product to. So I think the countries paying attention to it and that's the kind of thing the world needs to pay attention to they're all that's why I thought Sharon's uh, that the reading that we used as a meditation that's why I thought that was so important we need to look at ourselves and see how does the world perceive us what kinds of privilege do we have or not just by the way we look and how other people perceive us. So, 
we need to think about those things and just let it gently be one of those clouds that we can look at, be aware of, and uh, not become angry about it, but we can let that cloud go and come back to a, a more neutral place emotionally. But we can, we can also react to it in a way that might be positive. Like don't spend your money on that on a on that on a company that would be um, that we know now is dealing with racist advertising. Um, we can all take little steps like that. So be aware of yourself as you move through the world and finding joy and happiness every day, and also being aware of the things that the little things that we'd like to change and that maybe the little steps that we take that eventually, that eventually in the long run, make a difference. So thank you so much for sharing my backyard with me. It's so nice out here and quieter than uh, my spot in the front that we might, I might do this more often. So thank you for coming to my back into my backyard with me. I'll see you tomorrow and have a beautiful day today. Thank you for sharing in my practice.